as we continue helping to build your golf swing for you. We talked about the grip, that's so, so very important. We talked about the aim and the stance and how you must build that. We went to the mini swing, the small swing, the 730 to 530, why that's so important. We graduated from the mini swing to the half swing, the sort of the nine to three golf swing. And now we're going to move up to the full swing. And the key thought here is turn and point twice. Now we're going to get the club all the way up. We're going to making full swings, producing full distance, but we've done it from small to big. We've done it from slow to quick. Absolutely the best way to learn. But at some point we need to make that big swing. And so now we get to the full swing. Now the full swing, if indeed it is a full swing, is where the club would go from behind the ball, it would travel all the way around up here, it would go all the way up here, and ideally, if you're flexible enough, the shaft would be about parallel to the ground here, and the full follow through is going to come all the way down, it's going to go all the way through that big circle, and again, it's going to be parallel to the ground. Now, it's parallel to the ground and it's pointing at the target, so it's parallel and point twice. I'm looking to help you build a motion that will result in the club being parallel to the ground but pointing at the target. And when you go through and you let the swing collect the ball, it's parallel to the ground, but again, pointing at the target. If I had a laser beam coming out of the end of that club, it's pointing right at that target now. Now, if we're going to make a full swing, we need to have a full turn. I haven't really talked much about the turn yet. And so as I do this series for beginners, for newcomers, for people who need a refresh on golf, I'm giving you the best drills I've got in my teaching career that have worked for the most number of people with the highest success rate. And this is the best turn drill I have ever seen. If you take an exercise band and you stretch it across your chest, so both arms are relatively straight and the exercise band touches your forearms and the exercise band touches your chest. Go through that again because you've got to have both of those. The exercise band has to rest against both forearms and touch the chest. If you do that, and then you bend in your good golf posture, which we have discussed. And then you make a motion where the head stays relatively still. We've already mentioned that. That's an ongoing thing. But you keep the band touching both arms and your chest. And you swing back till you can see that band is about 90 degrees to the target line. And it's still touching your chest and still touching both arms. And then you come through the other way so that the chest is about 90 degrees to the target line and it's still touching both arms and still touching your chest. If you learn to turn in that manner, you'll have a golf swing that ends up being very powerful. If we're looking for power, if we're looking for the engine, if we're looking to put the POW in power, this is largely where it comes from, a very powerful pivot. Now this takes work because it's very easy to just think that we just wave the arms around. The arms have got a very important job. However, the body must be doing its job. So there's a pivot and this is the best pivot drill I know. So I'm very hopeful that you will do that. Now that's not the only thing we've got to do in order to get that club to swing all the way around the body and get all the way up here and then come down and go all the way around the body and get up there. That's the full swing. There's a couple of other things we've got to do. Something has to happen at the wrists. I could get all fancy and say it's radial deviation, but I'm not going to. I'm going to say the best way I've found to teach people how to do that is just go and get a coat hanger and just either hold a coat hanger on the golf club or just hold a coat hanger for that matter. Get your hands down to the bottom of that coat hanger. Wrist action does not need to be any more complicated than this. Do you see the hook of the coat hanger there? You can see it. You can see it. We're going to play a new golf game. It's called hide the hook. I'm going to hide the hook of the coat hanger. Now you see it, now you don't. I played hide the hook. And where else do we play hide the hook? Well, when we come around the other side, we've got to hide the hook. If you play hide the hook with the coat hanger, 
it will teach you pretty much everything you need to know about how the wrists need to work in the golf swing. So now I've got this golf swing, it's going all the way around the body. I've started with the grip, I've aimed the face, I started with the mini swing, I went to the nine to three swing where the shaft's parallel. Now I'm allowing my trail arm to fold as I play hide the hook and I'm parallel and pointing once and I'm coming down and I'm parallel and pointing twice. Now you'll notice when I do that, the trail heel does come off the ground. I don't stay flat footed. So putting it all together, it begins to now look something like this. I'm going to do this slowly. It's not going to be that fast. I'm just going to just aim the face, take the body, got the grip, all the way round and up, all the way round and through. And something like that. And we'll have more to say about finishing on balance before we finish our uh, time together. But that type of action will help you immensely in this game of golf. Now, you will see that every ball I've hit so far today has been off a tee. I recommend that for people who are just getting into golf. You will see that I'm using a lofted club. It's actually my seven iron. I recommend that for people just getting into golf. I do not recommend hitting a lot of shots with the big guy here until you've got some idea what you're doing. So one more time with this, and then I have one other thing to show you. And as I said, I am simplifying this on purpose, but that doesn't mean there isn't great wisdom in what I'm telling you. There's great depth in what I'm talking about today. It can be as simple a thought as using the coat hanger. It can be as simple a thought as turn and point, turn and point. But with those two simple thoughts, you're actually starting to get quite a lot done now with regard to making the golf ball go down your target line. Now there's one last thing that I have found is essential for people just getting into golf. Everything I've said, I obviously want you to do, otherwise I wouldn't have said it. But as I look at people who are getting into golf, there is a serious problem called lack of structure. Now, lack of structure is when people might know the information I've just given you, but the arms are bending and wobbling and the elbows are coming apart. And you can go down a deep rabbit hole on what causes that. Or, much easier, we could just take a simple party balloon. And this will add a level to your golf game that will shock you how helpful hitting with a balloon between your arms is. So I'm going to pop this balloon between my arms. And I like the balloon because as I squeeze it, you can see the balloon changes shape. Some people would put a ball there, I would put a balloon there. I want enough structure between your arms that you would squeeze that balloon. I would want you to keep a good amount of that structure as you swing back. We go through that first parallel, the head staying still, the wrists are cocking, round and round it goes, but the balloon stays there. Down we come, through we go, the balloon stays there. Sometimes I think in golf about, wouldn't it be nice if I could write a letter to a 15-year-old Martin Hall telling him what I've learnt on my journey? At the very top of the list in the letter that I would send to a 15-year-old Martin Hall would be, put a balloon between your arms. It will help you greatly with the structure of the golf swing. So there's nothing overly complicated in what I've given you to do. We've got a coat hanger, we've got an exercise band, we've got a balloon between the arms, all things you can do at home. Can you hit a ball with a balloon between your arms? Yes, you can. I wouldn't necessarily go at absolutely full speed, but yes, you can. And you can just hold that finish there, more on that later. But if you'll do those things, if you'll use an exercise band, if you'll use a coat hanger, and you use a balloon, you're going to start to get some structure. And if you'll just point that club at the target one time, point that club at the target two times, you are going to be well on your way to getting ready to go on the golf course.